Okay. Okay, everybody. Hello today. Um, it's really uh, cosmic because we have freaking cosmic um, ladies online here with waterfalls and eyeballs. And um, we'll see how many people we can uh, pull on stage today. We're supposed to have some really incredible um, offerings today. And um, yesterday I was actually, yesterday I was at the... Um, Derek Kilmer's office, who is a representative of Washington State. And I went with my elders to protest um, nuclear war. And there's dirty bombs being sent over to Ukraine. And um, even Amy Goodman doesn't know what they are because she says, oh, dirty bombs are being sent over by the Biden administration, blah, blah, blah. And so um, the people that are in this coalition, I don't have the paperwork with me here, but this coalition that is super incredible here in Washington state are a bunch of elders that are not settling for nuclear warfare. So just like us, um, you know, um, who would Jesus do? Um, we are going to be surrendering ourselves to the incredible Jack Herrer, um lineage and road, you know, the 420 highway to get the prisoners out. But yesterday I went and I was with a bunch of people in a car and we drove an hour and we went to the office of Derek Kilmer and they weren't there. So I filmed everybody in the hallway for like 20 minutes reading what they were going to read to Derek and making sense of it all. That's what we're doing. We're trying to make sense of this all and present it to the world in such a way that there's no way they can say CBD doesn't work or CBG or the the nobody should be in jail for a plant. So if you can imagine everybody growing up without your dad for 30 years, 30 years, because they were in jail for three strikes marijuana, you know, Jeff Mazansky, who I filmed and who is out and home after 300,000 signatures, it takes that much energy just to get our point across. Now we're getting ready to do a concert. We're um, hooking up with HempFest, with the U.S. Weed Channel. Shane, we love you. Thank you for joining us today. Hemp, hemp, hooray. And, you know, so <laughs> we're going to keep our Dr. Demento flowing here and see if we can get uh, the news read today. Rodham is supposed to be here. Some other people that are coming on board are... Um, are some really beautiful people that are Im important in the the fight for cannabis and for the rest of um, just humanity needs to have this plant grown for, uh, I had my jacket here earlier, but I have a hemp jacket that's 25 years old and it's the most comfortable Manistash jacket ever. And so we need to make paper, fiber, fuel, medicine, plastic and food now hempcrete also we need to build homes with it so we're working with lakota hemp right now um in the dakotas and um and also in montana i heard they're growing um a million acres the indigenous people there um so we can make hempcrete blocks they they are better than concrete because we don't have to rape the earth and the fumes that people are breathing and the byproducts of a lot of things on the planet are killing the people that are in that industry vinyl i'm a foodie everybody and i'm not preaching i'm teaching i'm sharing what i've learned and in the food industry in the vinyl industry people die early because they're extruding your windows and they off-gas actually vinyl windows, the life of the window. And so just think about your liver and how little pieces of things get in there and it can't process them all. Who here in this room has seen cancer in themselves or in friends or family? Um, I'm not saying anything because I cannot give you a testimonial by myself that CBD or Rick Simpson oil works but in my movie we have several people that say the combination of both are compatible with chemo and they work so today we're going to talk about uh this lady that i met lauren at the departure festival this weekend they carried her on stage they put her down she had flowers in her hair and her bro um 
was singing with her, rapping about lion's mane mushrooms. Lion's mane is good for the brain. Lion's mane is good for the brain. And um, and chamomile, he took a sip of chamomile that she gave him, and then she sang a beautiful song. So we're, we're hopefully going to have them on today, and um, we'll see who shows up and shows in. And if not, just us four today will be great. And I'll read the news if Rodimus doesn't come. So um, we keep going because we have to. And so let's do a circle before we do our, our intro here. And um, I've got a couple messages to see if anybody else wants in. And um, so there we go. So... I'm really excited for today's show. We're going to talk about um, another law, um, um, soul that has left the planet. And um, it was just really, really amazing um, to hear about him and another Rainbow Brother um, and the dedication that, um, that he did for the movement. So in a 420 spirit and, um, and welcoming aboard, I welcome Natasha. I welcome Crazy Pop Mom, um, giving us some uh, some cloudage there, and beautiful Shane Duell. Um, and uh, we're really um, excited to have you all. We'll come talk to you in a second. Um, why don't we? Why don't we do this for a second? I'm going to. I'm going to play one thing for you all here. Uh, let's see if I can find my bits and baits here. So I'm going to share my screen with you. I've already got my, um, let's see, let's see if I can get this going here, everybody. So I've got my share screen on here with my beautiful extra optimizers here. And, um, in fact, I'm going to stop share and I'm going to put my optimizers on again because it is the way to go here. So we're going to record this show here, record on this computer. Recording in progress. Okay, so we're recording everybody. Today is a episode 174. We're on Weed Weeds Day. Who would Jesus doob is my shirt today of choice. Hey, hey, hey. And uh, <laughs> so here we go. Um, I'm going to share a screen with you all here. And I'm going to optimize it. Now we're talking. And um, until we get somebody in the back office, once we get monetized and we get um, somebody full time in the back office, it's just little old me hanging out and um, putting all the things together here. So welcome, everybody. And I'm going to show you this incredible video. See if I can move some of my stuff around here. So I'm going to show you this incredible video right here of my. Let's see if if we can get some bandwidth. And here we go. I made this video, everybody. Come on, baby, you can do Give it a good whack.
Infuse pesto, everybody. Infuse one of these baits. All right, everybody, a little Bitsy Bates to start the morning um, is not too bad. Um, let's. Okay, so we're really excited to have Bitsy Bates um, on today. Um, one day we'll get Bitsy Bates on for real, and Bitsy Bates will come to our concert and uh, cook for Tommy Chong, you know, and uh, make some infused pasta, you know, and and uh, mussels and clams. And, you know, I'm a vegan, but um, my friend's leaving uh, this weekend to go back to Australia, and he's my go-to, my 5 o'clock, to watch sports with, and we play golf together. And I'm going to miss my friend Gary. So today um, is for... Um, is World 420 days, so we'll have 42 seconds of memory the, the prisoners uh, a little bit later. But right now, um, I'm going to remember Gary. So my, my Aussie friend Gary's leaving. It's not like he's dying, but he's leaving me. And uh, so my sports of, of you know, 5 o'clock is going to be missed. But I have a beautiful new soul um, in my life, uh, Kim. Uh, Kim Green, and she's navigating some beautiful things. She's a teacher and um, and a sweetheart, and uh, she loves sports. So um, I can do my five o'clocks maybe with, with her, but a little bit virtual because we live an hour away from each other, which is maybe a good thing, you know, but one of these days we'll uh, spend more and more and more time together. So welcome everybody to um, a day full of remembering the past, the people that have passed. And um, so um, how many in this room have seen the miracles of the medicinal aspects of cannabis? Me, me, Shane. And oh, there's a thumb up from Crazy Pop Mom. Yeah, so um, uh, Natasha, tell us one of your stories of um, the benefits sleeping or healing that uh, that really woke you up or you got to tell everybody um, how cannabis is a really great medicine for your team? I will. I was a lucky person to get involved with cannabis in any shape or form. 
And I've never had a bed or thought the bed as a medicine before until your back is against the wall. You've tried everything else. And the prognosis forward is just more of the more awful. And there's got to be a better way, right? There has to be. The, what, what happened to the care in truly caring, in, in healthcare, in truly caring about somebody? What happened to that? So I knew there just had to be God is all love, and I just know that he put someplace on this earth something that is healing, something that is the antidote to all this hatred and this pain and all this fear and all of that. So I, I found it reluctantly, and it absolutely, completely changed my life. I was facing a full cost to me at 27 years old. I was facing a unknown future, and I had to carry a backpack with morphine in it wherever I went for pain. And I was very much dependent and soon addicted to all of my prescriptions, strong narcotics just to not go to sleep but to stay up, to be able to function and to be able to use the tubes that were in my body to make my food go into my body and so on and so on. What did happen? is I have been poisoned, but we wouldn't know this for a very long time. So we would be chasing a misknown diagnosis of sprue, Crohn's disease, irritable bowel, because I was young. I, and I ever had a female doctor, she would look at me like it was my fault. And she would scold me and tell me that I was stinging, purging, or I was anorexic, or I was obsessed in some way and form that I'd done this to myself. So I was very shamed all the way to the time I'm dying and I'm being shamed to my death. And in the end, I turned to God and God gave me an answer. And that answer was cannabis. And it came in the form of a brownie that was doused in oil, just, just completely saturated in white widow and white rhino. I've never even heard of such things. And um, it was a gift given to me by a friend of mine who was going through an incredibly difficult traumatic medical time of her own and there was a little known research going on in the back shadows with medical grade cannabis and lucky me she was involved in it and later i would be too but we would chase this diagnosis forever because it showed up like every disease under the sun and in the 80s the only thing you can think of when somebody is that sick and, and suddenly and, and so ill as i were after having so many parts removed I was living on Monty Python's sketch, and I was a donor. Hey. <laughs> but then I cut from my dogs, and I kind of needed them. I was 40 years old at the time. So I'm 58 now, and I don't even have a partial, and I don't carry any type of backpack with me whatsoever. In fact, I do yoga, force went to yoga with my seniors. I am taking care of this. Wait, 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 wait. Slow, slow your jets down. Wait, wait. Sorry. 420 yoga with your seniors. Yes. Explain. <laughs> so I'm a care nurse in turn, and I'm a caregiver, and I am just hours away from being a state caregiver once again. And I have some seniors, the Chocolate Senior uh, Cannabis Club, the 60 members. I plan to get more. And we, I do yoga, and soon people started joining in on the Zoom, and then I started doing it on the roof, and I was too dangerous. They really liked that. So then they, they kind of started telling me what they wanted, and I kind of started just doing as I were told. And so I have dance sessions with uh, Ed as novice style. Oh, he's brilliant. We have to make him laugh as much as I can, so I keep the lean mask going, and um, I keep as much comedy as possible. I cook, so kind of the vine recipes are always on top. It's, and, and I was taking care of the, you know, their pets. I do still... But the one that had the six pound lump, unfortunately. Wait, 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 wait. We wanted to hear about about 420 yoga. Uh, well, I can't do anything without 420 in it. I mean, I can, but I prefer not to. No, but uh, but but do the elders do it? Do the elders imbibe and then and then go? Uh, so I'm responsible for bringing in the food, the treats, the, the nutrition, whatever, and so that means that all meals are kind of imbibed. I also have a spa system of skincare, 
and I, the elders use that as well. And let me tell you, they're not looking so elder anymore. And they noticed it straight away. So that became the, the regimen that I do, they do. And so we partake in any way that they, part, they prefer. Uh, and then we indulge in some yoga. And I do the 15 moves that'll change your body in 30 days or less, the bright side on, on YouTube. Well, we're really proud yeah. of you, um, Canon Nurse, and uh, for navigating that. Um, we'll have to get Bitsy Bates so, with you and uh, to bring some infused uh, food from her uh, side of the of the road. Let's uh, let's bring Shane up. Um, let's bring Shane up for a second because um, we love our our Mr. Shane. Shane, how are you today? Good to see you. Thank you, Jeff. It's good to be here. Hello, everybody. I am super bitching. As always. Hey. <laughs> there we go. Wait, wait. Okay. And tell go. tell us a little bit about the um uh um because the question I asked before we talk about the US Weed channel, of course, we want to have an update there, but tell us a little bit about um some magic that you saw um 420 help, you know, um anybody at any age. Um, well, you know, like, like you said in the beginning, you can't, we're not supposed to say that we've, we've healed people from cancer, right? Right. But I have helped, uh, three different individuals, uh, obtain, uh, RSO or cannabis oil. And two of them removed cannabis from their blood. Oh, actually three now, because we just got the message on my... my wait, 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 cannabis from their... They, they removed what from their blood? Excuse me, they removed cancer from their blood. Okay. So uh, what happened was, I'll give you the three summaries. When I first started U.S. Weed Channel, we had a sales rep uh, named Deb, and her husband had... Uh, gosh, what is it? Uh, Lymphoma. Something down there. Anyways, he had some prostate, cancer. prostate, prostate. Thank you very much. I can't yeah. think of the word. Okay. Anyways, his PSAs were, were rising rapidly while she was working for us. And I said, Deb, have you ever heard of RSO? And she had not, she wasn't from the cannabis world. Right. So, uh, we got her husband, uh, Kent, uh, a bunch of RSO that we had made ourselves actually following the, the guidelines and all that. And we made a little cleaner from the original. Um, but what happened was he started taking it and, uh, his doctor, they obviously, you know, six weeks in started, they were constantly testing, but eventually after about eight weeks, it went, his PSA, PSAs went back to normal. Uh, and then within like another six to eight weeks after that, the doctor was like, well, we're testing, but we can't find cancer in your bloodstream. So we don't know what you're doing, but keep doing it. And they, obviously they knew because he talked to them, but they couldn't record it. So this was back in 2014. Almost at the same time, a, a mutual friend of ours um, had breast cancer. And so we set her up with um, RSO, you know, and we also made a bunch of brownies for her because she had actual surgery to remove one of her breasts uh, or some cancer inside of it. So in summary, the best, that was like the best, one of the best moments of my life, literally. She was on the phone with us. And it was about 8.30 in the morning. And she started this, she was on speakerphone and she started like, hey guys, it's the morning. And you know, I just wanted to call and I wanted to tell you, how, you know, and she stopped and she couldn't breathe for a second. And she started kind of crying and she goes, you guys, I'm just driving my kids to school and I'm not in pain and I'm a fucking live. And I just want to tell you that. I just don't even know how to say it calmly. I'm just so fucking happy. Excuse my language, but like that was literally it. She was crying. Quality of life. Joy. Quality oh. of life. Oh, it was just insane. It was so good to hear. And then more recently, uh, a friend of mine from high school about two years ago, two and a half years ago came to my door and he was living in Arizona, but he came here to California to get some treatment. And he came to my door. And when I opened the door, he busted out in tears. And, you know, what, I mean, you can see a lot of people cry, but when you see a grown man, uh, 50 years old, 
stand in front of you and bust into tears because he has hit hopelessness and he thinks he's going to die because he has cancer in his lungs and he's just got the news, man. In his brain, he's going to die. He came from the doctor office to my pay, my my pad. And uh, so John and I have been friends literally since we were like 14. And so I brought him inside and I was like, you know, I get it. And, and we talked for like an hour and I said, and when he calmed down a little bit, I said, okay, here's the deal, dude. I'm going to give you like 72 hours to feel all the depression and all this upsetness that you want to feel. Just do it all. If you want to cry, you want to scream, you just do it all. But at the end of 72 hours, it's all oranges and, and this thing called Rick Simpson oil that I know about. I've seen it work with people. And we're gonna kick cancer's ass and that was two and a half years ago and about maybe three years ago and and literally two months ago you know he gives us these update texts and he gave me that message hey man there's no cancer in my blood <laughs> just came back the test came in there's no cancer in my blood like dude when you hear stuff like that from people that are gonna die they thought they were gonna die and now they're not you can't you can't stop that good feeling you cannot it just it resonates through you i mean just thinking about it now i'm getting goosebumps and stuff remembering those moments and stuff it's why we um, do this what we're doing it, it's really real and it, it is really I, I you know to have an austin powers moment it is really real and, and that's all i can say and and those are the kind of moments you know, to segue that I want everybody to see on, on US We channel. You know, I want those moments. I want to record hundreds of those and, and get them out. And I know mainstream and medical doesn't necessarily like it, but look, you guys are making your money. You're going to continue to make your money in your different ways. We're doing our thing, right? So we don't try to stomp you, medical society. Let us do our thing, right? integrate with us that's the best way i could say it because i haven't heard a lot of people coming from mainstream doctor offices saying cancer's not in my blood unless they freaking introduced cannabis into their process and what, what i big. what i've heard is that it's compatible it doesn't interfere with the chemo and those brave ama doctors the the regular mainstream doctors that are allowing their patients to go both ways are seemingly like like I said earlier. We can't give our own testimonials as as producers of shows, but we can bring other people on that have their testimonials. I was talking to Chris Boucher today, and I have a little video of Chris talking about um, about CBA CBDA, and that it's. Um, a thousand times, 300 times, it's a lot of times more bioavailable than CBD, than CBDG, than CBD, QRS, TUVWXYZ. And sure. he's got it in his juice now. And so um, the lady I was talking about earlier today, uh, Lauren, she's going to be in our, in our intro. Um, and um, he was talking to her about that. And um, I don't see either of them on today right now or Rodimus, but um, let's keep going. And um, you know what, Jeff, let me yeah. say one last thing. Sure. And then I'll, and I'll let you go for yeah. it. I'll make it brief. Go for it. On a positive note, you know, my, my mother, she is um, older than I am. <laughs> we'll just say that. And uh, to be respectful. And in a big, you know, rainbow turn of events, she has literally told me since I was a child, you know, this kind of this weed thing is just bad, right? And uh, literally went to her house two days ago and saw a prescription on her countertop. And I thought, did you write this, Mom? And like, it's a note for yourself? And she goes, no, my doctor prescribed it. It said CBD. <laughs> so... Mom now is on CBD, and I am just thankful for it. You know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> Again, this is a reform show. Nobody should be in jail for CBD or, Amen, or THC. The, the other thing I wanted to share with you was 
Dr. Machulam, you know, I mean, Israel. Yeah. Israel has been studying the um, medicinal aspects for years, um, isolating all of the um, the factors of the cannabinoids. And we have cannabinoids in our system and you take more of them, they're supposed to enhance that and help us to heal quicker and have quality of life. Again, all I know is, is examples. You know, a, a friend of mine came over and she says, you know, I, I, I'm going to sleep in your motorhome tonight, Jeffrey, but, you know, do you have anything that would help me to sleep? Any melatonin? Um, you know, I'm a vegan, so I don't have any tryptophan. I don't have any turkey in the house. So I gave her some drops that I got at NOCO, um, at the NOCO exhibit um, in Colorado, and they were super powerful. And the next morning, she said, slept great better than ever so everybody you find your own cbd you find your own um remedies and your own level of ingesting be careful um don't overdo it everybody don't drive with uh with cannabis in your system everybody be respectful be responsible but find your strain to help your brain that's all i got so I'm gonna share. I'm gonna share screens with you. Thank you. We'll we'll be back to you in a second here, and I'm gonna get to everybody here, and I'm gonna run our <laughs> halfway into our show, our um, our intro here. So let's share screen here, everybody, and uh, share my intro here because I got a good intro today, and it is going to blow your mind here if I can find it right here. Here we go. Okay. Today we are going to honor Goblin, a beautiful soul, a beautiful person, a beautiful friend of most of us and those of us that are on here. Thank you, Des, for taking care of Goblin and his legacy. We're going to share his legacy and just prop it up. Everybody's got to be as good as they can be. And this gentleman was incredible. So hemp hemp hooray. And here we go. We weed stay. This beautiful woman, Laura, was literally brought on stage and she's healing with 420 compatible with her chemo from leukemia we honor you lauren and welcome aboard and we have chris boucher to let you know about cbda hello everybody it's jeff i can hear with we wednesday episode 174 so i hope you remember the 70s we had david bowie Ground control of Major Tom and the rest. So just remember, nobody deserves to be in jail for a joint. And love and light to all of you. And let's end this prohibition. So much is going on for all of us in our life. Just stay nice, stay friends, and help each other. So, everybody, it's episode 174. It's um, actually World 420 Day. On the fourth weeds day of the month, we do World 420 Day. We take 42 seconds out to remember the prisoners and people in jail for 30 plus years for a plan i mean sitting next to somebody that might be you know a violent criminal and and then not being able to see their children so we'll take 42 seconds out right now and um uh, we'll sit here with um mr prison himself um johnny cash and um just take a few seconds out here and close your eyes everybody mm. Visualize ending prohibition, putting our hands in the air, 
having all of the uh, retirement homes with CBD and with 420 available for their joints, for their wellness, and to be able to build homes and not go to jail for a plant anymore. It's still happening, everybody. There's many, many, many people that are benefiting from the industry and they need to step up and to help us um, visualize that there's still people in jail for cannabis. And so I'm gonna share with you a couple of those people right now. So let's, uh, let's see if we can um, go right here and see if I can find the um uh let's see if i can find here an incredible lady that is helping more prisoners than you can imagine her name is amy and amy's from the can do clemency um you can see all those people in there amy's sparkling right in the middle there's amy right there everybody and um she's doing second chance she's doing so much and uh, this is her Facebook site. And um, it's just so remarkable, um, the things that, that she has um, done over the years and, and the stuff that she's doing again. I mean, even these people that come out, they're on parole when they come out after 30 years. It's like still having an ankle bracelet on. But I wanted to say a shout out to Hector Marquez. Hector is serving life for pot, everybody what the hell you know um look at that beautiful soul and so um while these people are still alive they deserve to come home to be with their children and um i'm just i'm just amazed still i'm still amazed um so today we have also a little bit of some canna news um i'll read a little bit because rodimus is not here but check out this new little graphic I made, everybody. Let's see if we can get this to play here. I'm going to see if we can get this to play. Come on. There we go. So it's Weed Weeds Day, and we present the can of news, and it flows when there's good bandwidth. And so it's really important to read the can of news. So I'm going to read a little bit because Rodimus is not here today, our incredible grasshopper, because it says Rodimus reads the news. And so um, I'm going to read some news to you today, and I'll read it while you watch me read it. So today, <coughs> the youth in Canada is home to the largest cannabis public policy and regulation experiment in history. Canada became the first G7 nation to pass a national adult use of cannabis legalization measures in the late 2018s and still remains the only G7 nation to do so. And so joining Canada on the list of legalization countries are Uruguay, Malta, Luxembourg. However, Canada is the only country on the list that permits sales to anyone of legal age, regardless of residency status. So if you go to Canada, I guess you can consume and buy. Consumers in Canada um, afforded the most robust options for obtaining cannabis by legal means, including dispensaries, delivery services, wahaha, uh, mail delivery, whoa ho ho, cannabis clubs, whoa ho ho, um, et cetera, leading up to the implement, implementation of legalization, cannabis opponents issued numerous warnings specific to youth consumption. By all measurements, doomsday predictions have not materialized. People thought, I guess, and I'm, I'm just doing editorial here, that uh, kids were going to get all messed up or effed up. So one talking point that the cannabis opponents touted leading up to legalization in Canada was that the legalization would increase the use consumption rates. It's popular talking point for cannabis, can, cannabis opponents everywhere that cannabis reforms and being considered, including medical cannabis from reform. What does that math say? Health in Canada conducts a survey 
every year to gauge among the things how many people report having consumed cannabis. According to 2019 survey, results of which released in 2020, bold and emphasis, cannabis of 15 years and older reported ever smoking cannabis. Okay, the prevalence of ever smoking cannabis was 25% amongst the youth aged and amongst the adults was 20 to 24 and 39% and amongst the adults of 25 and over. So that's pretty cool, everybody, um, that uh, their statistics, they're keeping an eye on it. It's our responsibility going forward with this, everybody, to do as Canada is doing. And they see from the survey results that the regulations appears to be better at curbing youth consumption rates than prohibition. So in prohibition, I guess the kids thought, oh man, we can go um, at 420 and, and smoke out. So that's pretty freaking cool. Um, we have one more thing to read about. Um, the cannabis legalization in Germany. I mean, what went wrong? Coalition of SPD ministers from Hamburg and Lower Saxony are trying to slow down the cannabis policy modernization efforts in Germany. Germany's current legalization efforts was historically led by the German health minister uh, Lauterbach from SPD. The coalition of SPD state ministers have their way. Minister Lauterbach's bill will never become law. What is currently being proposed a multi-phase to plan modernizing the Germany's adult use in the cannabis phase, which was approved by German's federal cabinet, would legalize the personal cultivation, possession, and use of cannabis. Additionally, the first phase would eventually permit non-commercial cannabis clubs to operate. The clubs would be subject to the host of regulations and individual consumers would also be restricted only to possessing one membership at a time. So while Germany's federal cabinet approved the first phase of the measure, it is now being considered by members of the Bundestag that it's very likely the provisions of the bill will evolve not in a manner that the coalition and the ministers were hoping for. So... As I know, because we have the ICBC there, the International Cannabis Festival there, that it's kind of backfiring in, in Germany. But let's hold faith that we can get to a really incredible phase and, and portion of our careers here in, in helping to, in helping to um, make cannabis legal globally. So thank you, thank you, um, Crazy Pot Mom, for joining us today. That was really cool. And um, and then, you know, at the end of um, of our show, we'll have uh, 12 seconds of uh, Mr. Rodimus Parag, Grasshopper, Snatch the Bud. So we're really excited to um, to have. The infamous, the famous, the incredible, um, <laughs> the incredible edible uh, human beings that do come in at the end of our show. But you know what? This is my show. We can go on as long as we want. So at the end of our show, we're getting Desiree. Desiree is a beautiful soul. Um, and we just talked about Desiree, um, about Goblin. And, um, and so, um, but we're going to interview, um, um say hello to Rodimus. Hello, Rodimus. Howdy, howdy, hi, howdy, howdy, hi. What's in your pie? <laughs> and um, so we navigated through the news today um with with or without you, and we'll have you read the news next week. And um, say hello to the crowd. And um, we were asking everybody today, give us one example of CBD or 420 that helped you medicinally. Well, I wish I could have used that as an excuse for why I'm late, uh, but um, all I have is to say that I had, uh, I, I was very tired today and I had a, a nice uh, homemade pizza and about 20 minutes before the show, I thought, 
yeah, you know, I just need to kind of relax for a couple minutes. You know, I'll just I'll just lay down on my sofa and just kind of take a really quick, just really quick little relax. And then I looked back up at the clock and it said five minutes to ten. And I well, for me, it's ten o'clock. And so I'm so sorry to have missed uh, the opportunity to do the news, uh, but I will make an extra commitment to be back next week. I had no idea that I fell asleep and missed your show, Jeff. I'm really sorry. well. Answer the freaking question. What what did what is 420 um, imbibed for you? Because um, we were telling yeah. earlier that we cannot tell people on my show or in my movies that oh it works oh it works oh it works but i can have testimonials so give us a test ammonio <laughs> i have to think you know i mean um for me uh well it was a it was a the first thing that comes to mind is that it helped me stay in my first marriage for longer than i might have than i might have wanted to otherwise <laughs> um meaning that um uh, you know, I had a lot of emotional stress that I was dealing with in, in a certain point in my life, and uh, I was able to uh, kind of take a, a, a moment to myself and uh, medicinally um, cope, you know, cope with uh, some situations that I didn't understand, and the, the medical marijuana would, would have made me, uh, you know, made me not be, not freak out with what was going on. On, help me cope with what was going on and put things in perspective for me. So I would say that that would be one application that I personally use. Okay, so that was a, a, a therapeutic um, aspect. Okay, so everybody, um, find your strain for your brain and don't use cocaine. <laughs> you know? But everything in moderation. I mean, our parents used to come home, my parents used to come home and have a Mai Tai and they would relax. They didn't abuse their alcohol. So I'm not saying marijuana is safer than alcohol, but at least marijuana doesn't mess with your liver. So thank you, Rodimus, so much for joining us today. Um, let's meet Desiree. It's our first time we have you on, Des, and we were talking about Goblin today, and um, that's Desiree's partner who left the planet um, early. And um, and so we're really excited to um, to have Desiree on today. Yeah, he left us far too soon, um, but he was just a really enigmatic, awesome artist. Um, he died at 35 of cholangiocarcinoma, um, bile duct cancer, and it came on suddenly. It was really 11 months uh, from the diagnosis to his passing. But the, what we I'm remembering him. For, I think everyone does is the way he lived, which was completely authentic. His artistic uh, ambitions, and he lived in a life as a traveler. He lived in buses, and he he uh, was a train hopper, and he made amazing art. And uh, he left behind a lot of art for me. I, even this T-shirt I'm wearing right here is one of his uh, pieces. Printed, and uh, he left a bunch of stencils. And right now, working on a surfboard, using one of his stencils, making a surfboard for his daughter. So his legacy lives on. Well, that's that's amazing. Um, we were talking earlier. I was talking to Des about um, legacy and um, about um, you know how many projects do we have left in time. And I think it it would be beautiful to um, to prop this gentleman up. Um, Chris Boucher has uh, introduced me to uh, to him and yourself, and I know you're down in Cali and everything. Um, so my my hand is in, my hat is in the court to uh, working on a legacy uh, film project, or just to get the word out to the youngsters to be all out, all out. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's really the lesson that everyone learned from him is um, to just not care about what anybody thought and live authentically and autonomously as much as he could. Um, you know, he was definitely like a survivor. Um, and then later on when he met me, I kind of maybe domesticated him a little bit, but we had a beautiful art making space. And um, I, uh, when he passed, um, I went through his illustrations and I made a little zine uh, magazine of all of his work. 
So I have multiple page um, magazine and a bunch of other stickers and things I printed for the memorial. And I, I would like to eventually do an actual art show. So the memorial was an art show of his um, his pieces, but um, I would like to, you know, bring his art into galleries and uh, just the amazing um, attention to detail and design, like all of his wearable art was really psychedelic and really influenced by his um, train hopping culture and his, his time in the punk scene. And he just, he makes some just really amazing pieces. This is one of the hats and all handmade glasses and math so anyways I, I think he was just uh you know a bit of a cyber shaman like a a, a new age uh, cyber shaman a cyber shaman that's fantastic yeah. that's fantastic <laughs> well we honor you gob and um and we're gonna stay with you super close and um i'll help you with projects when i can and let's um let's get the word out to everybody and and give hope to the children and this is a reform show. We talk about cannabis prisoners. Nobody should be in jail for a plant. Say hello to the prisoners. Hello. Um, yeah, so um, definitely uh, he was in the, the cannabis scene. Um, he was a trimmer uh, for many years. And, um, you know, uh, th these were his dreads. Whoa. Long green dreads he grew for 20 years. Um, he really walked the walk. And, um, you know, with his uncle's influence, Chris Boucher, um, you know, he was, I think, led on um, a really good path ideologically. And, um, you know, my heart goes out to all the people who are in prison for cannabis. It's ridiculous. And uh, Mitch was definitely on the same page about um, cannabis reform. Well, you know what? when somebody gets sick i always tell them that when they leave the planet they're not sick anymore so god bless goblin and his next journey and um i got to meet timothy leary and mulholland at his house one time with fantuzzi and the gang and um timothy's on the other side but you know everybody's timothy everybody's goblin you know <laughs> We have it in us, so let's share that with everybody. I mean, Pee Wee Herman. I mean, they're they're all special and all unique, and and um and that you got to touch Gob. I'm I'm really proud to meet you, and um everybody, um let's give a hamp hamp array <laughs> for Mr. Goblin and and for just being authentic. I think that's the best word I heard all day. Yeah, well, hemp hemp hooray, everybody. Um, at the, uh, I'm going to bring us back into our little um, gallery view. Um, Rodimus, can you come back up and give us three fingers? We want to do our three finger shot today. Um, are you with us still, RP? Hello. Hello. Okay, three fingers, everybody, for weed. That's our new peace sign. Yeah, there we go. And so I'm going to go like this and then, okay, one, two, three. Let's do it again. One, two, three. Okay, I got it. So everybody, it's been a great show and everything. Um, I'm gonna roll our um, our Goblin uh, slideshow again for you, um, Des, since you're here. And uh, that's our intro. Now we're gonna do it as our outro. So here we go. Um, let me let me pull it in for you and stick around, and we'll play it right. Now, okay, here we go. everybody today we are going to honor goblin a beautiful soul a beautiful person a beautiful friend of most of us and those of us that are on here thank you des
for taking care of Goblin and his legacy. We're going to share his legacy and just prop it up. Everybody's got to be as good as they can be. And this gentleman was incredible. So hemp hemp hooray. And here we go. We we stay. This beautiful woman, Laura, was literally brought on stage and she's healing with 420 compatible with her chemo from leukemia. We honor you, Lauren, and welcome aboard. And we have Chris Boucher to let you know about CBDA. Hello, everybody. It's Jeff Eichen here with We Wee's Day, episode 174. So I hope you remember the 70s. We had David Bowie, Ground Control, the Major Tom, and the rest. So just remember, nobody deserves to be in jail for a joint and love and light to all of you and let's end this prohibition so much is going on for all of us in our life just stay nice stay friends and help each other there's johnny cash everybody so we have an incredible um uh gift today to be able to to bring goblin into the house and into the room we have rodimus back rodimus say hello to desiree hey desiree hey desiree hi how are you i'm, I'm good uh thank you so much for carrying on uh his legacy, um, the work is beautiful. Uh, I wish I could have been. Desiree Rodimus is the um, is the uh, I guess the legacy of Kung Fu television show. He's Grasshopper. He was a little bald boy that snatched the pebble. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> what is your um, experience with um, are you using cannabis as healing? Is that what you were just discussing? Was it for yeah. ther therapy, emo uh, emotional therapy, or? Yes, uh, yes. I would say that it, it helped me cope uh, with very difficult uh, two different two different very difficult periods of my life. Uh, I don't think that without I think that without uh, that I would have really uh, lost lost contact with myself. I think the cannabis allowed me to stay in check with myself and hear my own thoughts and my own feelings about things when uh, those are being drowned out by others. Yeah, to really find find yourself and be authentic to yourself. Um, yeah, I found that also to be the case um, with, with my husband, Goblin, um, but then later, as he got cancer, he was actually using um, cannabis as a um, pain relief and to avoid having to take opioids early on in the in the cancer journey. He was uh, experiencing pain in his stomach, but um, instead of using opioids, he was using cannabis for as long as he could. Towards the end, he, he needed opioids. It was that bad. But um, he was actually supplementing um, high-potency THC, and he was also using... Um, CBDA, uh, well, the product Juice Tiva from um, from Chris Boucher, um, their uh, their company Juice Tiva. We were using that with the, uh, for like the anti-inflammatory effects and nausea. And nausea, absolutely, and it really worked. It it helped him a lot. So um, it did become very much like a physically medicinal. Um, use for him um and it really did help with pain relief fantastic well everybody this is episode 174 we've gone over just a little bit today but you know what um overtime means that we're going to score more we're going to score with more stories and it's my show i can do what i please you know i mean what would jesus do everybody <laughs> so we're really pleased to have um, everybody on today. Natasha, thank you so much for joining us. And um, Rodimus, thank you for um, waking up. Boing, <laughs> boing, <laughs> boing, you know. And um, and Des, it's a super pleasure to meet you. You're a doll. 
and um, our empathy is for you. I can't imagine, um, you know, and I was saying earlier that my friend um, Gary from Australia is leaving in three days to move back to Australia, and he's my five o'clock. It's almost like I'm losing him, you know, and in, in a matter of speaking, but we'll have FaceTime. So maybe do you have cosmic FaceTime when you close your eyes and dream about uh, your partner? Do. I always see him um, uh, in my dreams, and a lot of people have, especially since his passing, he's visited a lot of his friends and family, um, but yeah, I see him almost every night in my dreams. That's what I'm going to do with my friend Gary. So after this show, I'm going to go over there. I'm taking him to the ferry on Sunday. We're taking him out to dinner. We're going to go golfing, get in my electric Harley golf cart. And, and um, you know, it's, you know, hospice is something, I guess, that we're all doing. We're all preparing ourselves to go home or to go to another place, everybody. But right now, I'm going to whisper to you all. Let's bring the prisoners home. So get involved with our concert that we're going to be doing. Uh, we're asking for Snoop and Willie Nelson and Earth, Wind and Fire. Come to us, everybody, and let's produce a concert. And we'll have Goblin's art there too. We'll have him. We'll have it on, and on the stage. How's that? We'll we'll do. We'll show us your T-shirt. Maybe that'll be the the the. Yeah, yeah. We'll do a Goblin T-shirt for for our concert. Does that sound good, uh, Rodimus? Okay, we got we got a thumbs up. Tag for him with his logo. Here it is. Let's see if we can show it. There it is. It's a big pirate flag. We're gonna fly to thread his ashes on a boat. So uh, he was a sailor, and so we're uh, gonna thread his ashes and fly that flag in, in honor of Goblin. <laughs> I wish I could come down. Maybe I maybe I can. You know, come down and and film it. Uh, you're gonna do that on the seventh or the sixth or. The sixth, the Friday, October sixth. Let's see. Maybe I could do a bonsai. We'll talk about that offline, everybody. In the meantime, everybody, it's World 420 Day. Take 42 seconds out of your own day today. Close your eyes and visualize the prisoners coming home and anything that keeps you in prison. Remember, 420 is available now more and more on the planet. Let's end prohibition. It's Jeff Eichen with Weed Weeds Day. Love you all. Love you all. Oh, yeah. Let's do three again, everybody. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, I got it. Okay, everybody, hemp, hemp, hooray. That's all I got for you today. And um, I'm going to love you all up and say um, it's been a pleasure. And it was quite a day even getting here today because my computer went down and now it's back. And you know what? When we talk to Des about Goblin, nothing matters but love. How can I top that? Hemp Emperor, everybody, is Jeff Eichen. We we say 174.